Awesome, man. What's up, dude? Thanks for your patience. Yeah, no problem, <laughs> man. I also have a hot girlfriend that, that distracts me from doing YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh so and i don't i don't uh <clears throat> i'm not surprised um you know you aren't rushing back to do youtube videos after doing those videos with that that schwartz kid joey schwartz hi joey oh the hang he's at the carnival dude yeah 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 i did a reaction oh, to, to your first video with him but oh my oh boy you you were you you did a really good job, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Of like keeping chill and everything, because that kid was just he's like bipolar or something. No, no, what you know what's going on? He had a chat going that whole time. I could see it yeah. flickering in his eyes. He had a yeah. chat. He had all these crazy carnivores on there telling him stuff, <laughs> and he wasn't being mean enough to you. And they were like telling him to say things because he was just randomly pulling stuff out. Yeah, and yeah. you you like. He like called you a narcissist and you you didn't even blink. You were just like, oh, I don't know about that, man. Like, like, dude. <laughs> and they're all, ex you know, they're expecting some raging vegan, you know, like yeah, they're, they're like, expecting the terror type. You you killed it. it. Joey got me well because it was like it was Saturday mornings after my running race. So like I knew I'd be home then. And so it was just good timing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just we just we uh, we timed it right like yeah how is it possible that he has that big of a channel after only a few months uh because he's just pretty easy because he's is like it? yeah because he's like he's just um he's doing reaction videos yeah you know he's doing reaction videos so if anyone does reaction videos you get it's pretty easy out eventually it's just yeah it's like you know it's like throwing bricks at windows like eventually something's going to crack through and you'll you know you, you get access so your reaction videos are always the ticket to getting clout and getting traction. Like, yeah, you know, that, that's what I told Freelance to do back in 2010 and 2011. And, you know, like reaction videos are the name of the game. How I, how even I got my channel up was reaction videos, basically, you know, like yeah. reactions, to like bike stuff or people <clears throat> make people's claims or other YouTubers, stuff like that. So reaction, people just love reactions, you know, like even porn, pornography, you know that's reaction you know it's human reaction or fighting is reaction or you know comedy or it's all about human reaction so if you if you do reactions it's like yeah guaranteed yeah it's crazy i used to Even be this is like a this is an interview a reaction based content yeah yeah i i just got re re-monetized i used to be in a band that's pretty big um and so I, I started doing reactions to music and my old band's music. And some of them have broken off and done, you know, and just started doing that. And I got yeah. I got remonetized in like three weeks because these kids went crazy because I haven't I haven't done a lot of content about the band I was in. I've just I'm, I'm into like political stuff and yeah. cryptocurrency and stuff like that. But um, yeah. but I was in. The, but I have this following of like uh, like perpetual 12 year old 13 year old kids that have been following that it's like <clears throat> that have been following me for like i haven't been in this band in like 15 years and i still have this group of kids that follows me so the second nice. i started doing videos consistently at least like one a week like i was re-monetized and like my my you know i, I was starting to get a better uh, amount of followers and stuff in and and then just the kids just keep wanting more and then i was starting to do live streams and then they're they're like super chatting me and i'm like what is going on like youtube is dope now yeah. um yeah. but yeah so that that's what i've been doing and then i've just been yeah, the more content to, you make the better yeah that's what i've been trying to do is just at least a video a day or every other day or like yeah, any least, chance like i get but it's anyway. a bit easier for me because I'm I'm established, you know, established name. But even still, if I, you know, people forget you quick. People forget you yeah. quick. It's like a relationship. It's like, you know, it's like you're having a girlfriend. It's like if you don't talk to her for a week or a few days or months, it's like she's getting, yeah. you know, it's just people need the attention. They want to connect. And it's just how it is. Yeah, definitely. And then, then watching your channel over the last two years, it's just, you know, like you, you, uh, you know, you're always making videos no matter what you know they'll be yeah, like, like maybe a sun. week or two at the most you know but you, then you come back and you make a bunch of videos to make up for those and you know you just That's have right. to stay consistent it seems like yeah 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 it matters so much it's like fitness youtube is like it's like a relationship it's like yes yeah yeah it's, you it, have to especially if you're starting out if you, especially if you're starting out more content is always better for sure yeah for sure well i've got over seven thousand videos up i think on youtube Damn. now that's a lot 
So if you average it out, it's probably you know, like over one a day. And that's since 2000, like 2014? No, nah, 2008. 2008. I, I uploaded okay. my first video on YouTube June 2008. Damn. So, yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that's quick, that's quick, man. Yeah. So a little background on me. Um, My mom raised me McDougal. She was big yeah, McDougal exactly. back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and she raised me like diehard McDougal. I was raised on, I was born on a hippie commune in Northern California. <laughs> where, where, um, where, where was that? Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, my yeah. mom went up there because there was the only midwife in the country lived there and she wanted to have a home birth. So she home birthed me there around all these hot hippie ladies. And um, <laughs> and she raised me like 90 percent vegetarian, but no sugar, uh, yeah. low carb, uh, super McDougal. Like she to this yeah. day is battling with her problems that she has from doing McDougal her whole life. Yeah. Um, her thyroid is all over the place and and we we talked to her me and Allie have talked to her about sugar and carbs and she's just like still you know and she's like well, McDougal's oh, McDougal, high McDougal. carb he's, he's just a bit sugar phobic that's all yeah but I remember as a kid uh, going to school and um, <clears throat> having hypo hyper hypoglycemic fits yeah. Where like everything would get really blurry and I couldn't focus on anything. And I'd be like <laughs> tripping out in school. And they're like, did your mom feed you? And I'm like, yeah. Um, and I and I always wondered about that because we were she was so we were so healthy, you know, and yeah, I was yeah. like, why was I having these hypoglycemic, you know, like what I I, I I diagnosed myself later as hypoglycemic fits. And yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. I too, all the same. me. And they'd give me yeah. like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something, and I'd be fine. Jelly afterwards. beans. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And like, I don't remember eating much fruit growing up. Like, I don't think, uh, like, I think she was really weird yeah. about fruit too. Um, yeah. And I, but I, but, but I had these fits over the years, and they put me on, you know, and I was hyper too. I was really high metabolism. So they put me on like Dilantin and Ritalin, like all these yep. crazy. What's Dilantin? What's Dilantin? Dilantin is an anti-seizure medicine that's now banned. Oh, yeah. um, okay. But they were thinking, uh, you know, they were thinking that somehow giving me an anti-seizure med would uh, calm me down in school. But yeah. I was just like passing out my in my chair, drooling on myself. And they would make me get up in front of the classroom and take it. My The nurse would call the class. And make me take it in front of everyone because the teacher had to see me take it. And like adults did this in like 1988, you know, like yeah. what were they thinking? But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> um, so I was really hyper, but my mom wasn't giving me sugar. So, of course, what I've learned now through, uh, you know, through Allie and watching your stuff is, you know, like I just didn't sugar, have enough sugar that friend yeah, yeah. and if, when with my high metabolism i needed like sugar to continue that and it was just burning me out or something like that but um so i was vegetarian um up until i was about 15 and then i got into i don't know if you ever heard of like the vegan straight edge movement that happened in yeah, yeah, yeah for sure yeah, earth, earth crisis yeah. and all those guys yeah yeah, yeah 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 those are all my buddies yeah, yeah. Um, so I got really into that and and being vegan in like 94 um, yeah. and like really, really serious vegan. Like I always go, go to all these different high schools and set up a booth and give, a, you awesome. know, give out PETA stuff and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and and do the same thing. It shows all over the California coast. Yeah. Um, and then uh, but I was uh, I was living off of soy milk, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And and texture vegetable protein products and you know all the old school nineties vegan stuff yeah, yeah. that was just they still sell it today but like it's not it's not the greatest stuff um, but I would buy cases of soy milk vanilla soy yeah. milk and drink two or three of them a day and yeah. it was it was killing me <laughs> like yeah. it was the most healthiest I've, unhealthiest I've ever been in my life um and uh, you know my my gums were receding i had uh yeah. what did i have i had uh the, the the things in the butt no hemorrhoids hemorrhoids yeah bad yeah. hemorrhoids oh my not god fried, at, not at, like, at like 17 years old you know yeah, yeah, like yeah. really yeah. bad and i was just yeah. like oh i'm healthy i'm vegan you know like what yeah, like yeah. i was completely i mean i was too young to know but i was also 
oblivious to really how you know how to eat right and um and was just just drinking soy milk and that was it basically <laughs> like it was it was soy milk was the major part of like where, where now rice is back then soy milk and tofu yeah. was the major yeah. And um, and it's funny because when my brother eventually went vegan recently, he ate nothing but so tofu and he got bad hemorrhoids and he was asking me why. And I'm like, dude, you got to <laughs> stop eating tofu. But um, so so then uh, then um, I grew up uh, up in Santa Cruz and my dad was like a sea captain. So I was I was working on boats a lot when I was a kid, too. Yeah. And then I then I got all, OK, so vegan straight edge stuff. Um, and then I, I ended up moving around a bit to be in some bands. And then yeah. I ended up moving back to L.A. because I always I was born in Orange County or not born in Santa Cruz, but raised in Orange County. See. And so yeah. back to L.A. and and I got in I got in like a modeling agency and a band and I was in like yeah. move, music videos and like all this stuff. And I got in a band that was pretty big and just kind of let go of my healthiness because I was drinking you know, gallons of whiskey and smoking cigarettes and doing the rock yeah, star yeah. thing, you know, just crazy Bad out of control. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I got, I got, once I, <laughs> I spent like probably 15 years in Hollywood, just being crazy, having a way too much fun. Somehow yeah. I survived it. Um, left, uh, I had, had a couple kids. <laughs> yeah. And, um, then uh eventually and, and i was and i was i was eating the standard american diet eventually at that during yeah. during most of that and i was eating like a subway sandwich 240 ounces of beer and like a half gallon of whiskey every day was my diet for several <laughs> like literally yeah bro yeah. like long time um almost a decade probably i was doing that that yeah. way yeah. um and i always had vegan guilt and i always felt bad because i knew i wasn't being healthy because my mom raised me to be healthy yeah. um but i was killing myself and completely in denial um so so eventually um i got i left the band stuff and i got uh you, do you know ron paul is yeah the politician dude yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he started he kind of in 2011, 2012, he got a huge movement going in the United States of people, right. conspiracy theorists and, you know, stuff like that. Really cool dude. I don't know if you've ever checked him out, but if you watch his like yeah, 2012 yeah. debates, uh, if you watch those debates, Ron Paul was killing it. He's like telling telling Republicans that they need to legalize heroin because he's like, dude, yeah. like like you're going to go out and do heroin tomorrow if it's legalized. Like we don't need to spend all this, you know, like really. Exactly really in like really smart guy really pragmatic dude logical yeah and so he started a whole like revolution in the u.s basically of yeah. like all these freer thinker freer thinkers and people being like i don't know if we need so much government and stuff like that so in that um i got into that whole scene and, and um started making videos and just kind of like being a talking head in that whole scene. And I worked for a couple as a journalist for a couple big outlets that were, um, you know, like alternative media did that yeah. stuff for years. And uh, a part of the, that whole movement is the non-aggression principle where you're, you're like, if, if we're going to live without government, we got to learn to, you know, not aggress on our neighbors, you know, like if we're going to figure this out and, and like self govern right. without yeah. a big government. Yeah. yeah. So, the non-aggression principles, the, one of the biggest things about the libertarian, voluntarist, anarchist movement that's happening right now in the U.S. And um, I was dating someone who was vegan and um, she was just like, dude, you're a fucking hypocrite. Like, you, you know, all these people look to you about this stuff. You know, but, you, you know, you you talk. I hear you talking about this non-aggression. And I laugh, you know, because like you're eating yeah, yeah. animals, dude. And I was just That's like, right. oh, because I knew it was true. <laughs> and then I had a buddy, um, a guy I know made a video called um, like libertarian vegan or something like that. And I just watched it and he made all these connections between like the meet su the sub subsidies in the u.s like how much money like our tax dollars and that's a big thing about this libertarian movement thing it's like we don't want to be taxed mm -hmm. and there's so much money the government gives to the meat and dairy industry in the u.s they that's pay insane. for 90 percent of like i always tell these guys i'm like dude 
Papa Biden's paying for 90 percent of that meat you're eating. Like you're, you're kidding me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you're trying to say it's natural, like that you're yeah, eating, yeah. that you're doubling down on mm. and eating and going carnivore, you know, and then and then you tell your you're you're saying you're in you're you're all about non-aggression and, and anti-subsidies and anti-big yeah. government, but you're going to go be carnivore like holy right. crap. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so. So so I watched my buddy's video and I was like, all right, well, I'm vegan again. Like it, it just it was it was completely in line with everything that I had been studying for 10 years. And mm -hmm. and it was, you know, of course, in any big group, you got like people that are very serious about it and people not so serious. And then there's like, oh, everyone's fakers and all this stuff. And it's like everyone's trying to be this like trying to emulate, you know, trying to do what we talk about basically. And, um, and that was a big step in my like whole, you know, agorism is the fine art of eliminating the government from your life, you know, and not involving yeah. yourself in what they're doing and going vegan is a huge thing. Sure. <laughs> it's like a huge step in doing that, in my opinion. Massive um, step. Yeah. Yeah. Like once you stop like buying new cars and like, having a high paying job that like pays tons of money to the war machine and shit like that, you know, like you got to stop doing that stuff. If you, if you're, if you actually believe in these, these values, you know, of like self sure, being sure. self-sufficient not having like a, you know, a welfare state going on and all this stuff. If yeah. we're all just going to take care of ourselves and leave each other alone, um, you know, be, you know, not, not contri you know, not doubling down on the most subsidized food that we have access to is probably <laughs> a really big step. And, and, and so you've been to my page a couple of times, right? I got a lot of people coming to my Facebook and they yeah. hate when I pour this stuff out yeah, it's so good. It's good much. Yeah, it's good dude. yeah. It, they, 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 cannot deal with it in the least bit so it's been really fun you know and and half of the stuff i use is stuff i've learned from you or ali nice. um because there's you know because i well uh, yeah i can go back to how i i think um i was making videos and someone commented once and they're all dude you're you make videos just like durian rider and i was like oh who's that and he's like oh there's this, it's this vegan guy who makes like kind of just like kind of just like like life half videos and stuff and i went and watched some of your stuff and i was like oh this guy seems cool and then i got a video of uh vegan gains was like grilling you on something and i'm like why is vegan oh, yeah. gains giving this guy shit he seems cool like he's doing god's work out here with, and vegan gains <laughs> is vegan like I've, i'd never seen two vegans talk <laughs> shit to each other you know or like have problems yeah. because we're when i was vegan <clears throat> was in the vegan straight edge days and it was us against the world you know That's like right. we were we were fighting for those animals in the streets, you know? So, yeah. so I created uh, vegan gains. I created his channel name. Yeah, I, I know. And it, it, <laughs> it didn't make any sense, but that was my first time. And it was like the first videos I saw you, you were just like flexing with bananas. And I think it was freely and it was like funny yeah. stuff. And I was cracking up. I was like, oh, this guy's hilarious. Um, and then years later, I met Allie and we yep. started dating. And she was like, oh, Durian Rider. And I was like, wait, I think I know who Durian Rider is, is. And we started watching her videos. And it was before I was even writing. And I was like, oh, I get it now. Because someone was like, that guy who went, the, the guy who commented, he was like, you kind of make videos like, like Durian Rider. Then I watched some of yours. And I was like, OK, he's just, you know, like reasonable dude, you know, trying to tell, tell trying to teach y the youngsters, you know, the things that we figured What's out. Do, yeah you know, doing this stuff over the years. And, yeah. um, and so, yeah, so going back to, so during that time I was, I was eating meat and dairy. Um, there were uh, several years where I was only eating meat and, um, I was, uh, working with this guy, Adam Kokesh, who was like, um, damn, I didn't want to bring him up, but he's, uh, he was like really early on to the carnivore stuff. And yeah. he's like, eat, eat, oil, eat oil, eat meat, all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And so, like, I, I did that for a couple years. And I did see, I did see, and, and um, one of my kids' mom was keto also. Yeah. And we had a kid, and we had, a, we had my daughter at home, and we had a, a, a midwife, and we were, like, doing tests and stuff. 
and they were like test doing tests on her and she they were like what is all this sugar in your urine yeah they were like we've never seen this ever you know because like they're silver lake these are like silver lake midwives right so none of those ladies around there are doing keto you know they're all vegan and stuff and they're like they were like we have never seen the the this like type of they had they were completely baffled they'd never seen the numbers before and it was because she was she only ate meat and she was just rejecting all her sugar and she also massive resistance yes and she was also very uh very moody very moody and and postpartum was terrible yeah um and you know and then other things like so several other things i've heard you talk about and i've learned over this time with the keto carnivore thing and like when i was on it like yeah i got buff but like i didn't have a use for that outside of vanity you know like i wasn't lifting heavy things all day you know i live in hollywood like you know like it's it's only now that i'm a cyclist that like you know it's it's completely changed so eventually ally i never saw ally when we first started dating because she's out riding all the time right and i'm like <laughs> cyclist she's like oh yeah i'm cyclist cyclist this cyclist this and dirt cyclist you know like when we first started dating and i'm just like one of those people that like rides in spandex like up hills and yeah. they're like all sweaty i'm all yeah i pass those people and I, I yell at them to buy motorcycle you know like <laughs> like i was like are you serious <laughs> well you're a cyclist huh so two months in i've seen i've hung out with her a total of like 12 hours because she rides every day and so I'm like, I guess I have to buy a bike in order to hang out with my girlfriend. Plus, um, she looks really good in her little spandex, <laughs> her spandex kit. So, so I bought a bike. I bought a Roubaix SL4. Uh, yeah, nice. I, I watched her videos and I was like, all right, what kind of bike should we get? And I watched her videos and bought a Roubaix and um, some nice shoes and a good seat and um, started riding. And my first month riding was re- my first couple months riding was insanely hard. I couldn't get up. I couldn't do 20 feet of elevation, dude. <laughs> like it was insane. Like <laughs> I would ride like our first the first big ride I went on was four miles. And I was all damn, that was four miles. And like we did some elevation yeah. and I would just I get out of the saddle, like sprint like three strokes, dude, and have to get off the bike. And it went from there. <laughs> to, to her putting me on your protocol six months later doing a century you know and doing like five yeah, six yeah. six thousand feet of elevation like within six months and doing yeah. belgian uh, finishing yeah. belgian waffle ride my first Made year out off, cycling yeah. went out and did that and finished my first year nice. i almost died i i bonked halfway yeah. through but i finished eventually <laughs> and yeah and it was like i'd never done any i've never had good cardio in my life I've been very, you know, like I've been very fit, but I've never done cardio. And so for that short of amount of time, and I'm your age, we're only a couple of weeks apart. I think in 45, um, I'm September 78. Um, but I'm, I'm an old guy too. And I haven't been as, as active as you my whole life and as fit as you. So for to, to go from like, the only thing I'd done fit fitness wise was yoga for like two years um and hot yoga which i think actually helped when i started cycling because in the valley it's so hot my heat yeah. tolerance it was good but um you know going from never you know i rode bikes when i was a kid but i didn't cycle like endurance cycling yeah like a road bike. Bike. Yeah, sure. yeah yeah so from going to just like absolutely zero to you know a few months later you know just chasing her because she's a beast yeah. like she's yeah she's got you know she battles with the pro girls out here for qualms all all nice. the time every time nice. she goes out um so and she's like yeah let's go ride today and i was like cool let's go ride and she takes me you know up through uh, like las flores and all all yeah. what are all the you know yeah, fernwood maholland all through yeah. there and i'm just like dying but i i it's like a hot girl i'm chasing it's my girlfriend like it's the perfect go. like it was so it was all so perfect to like perfect motivate carrot. me to become like quite a beast in like 6 months yep. and like 
And then just like I'm, I'm a mechanic, so I'm like way into the technical stuff. So like all your videos were really interesting about all the, you know, I'm a motorcycle mechanic. I'm way into motorcycles, so like yeah. the bike stuff was just oh, okay. It's just a different motorcycle. It's less stuff, yeah. you know. But yeah. there's a whole new, a whole new, uh, a whole new, all this new stuff you have to learn. Like all your videos, yeah. Because um, she'd take her bike to the shop, and it would be like two hundred dollars, and they bring give it back, yeah. and it's still not working right. And I'd fix it, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, okay, we're not going to any shops anymore. I'm just gonna watch yeah, yeah. Harley's videos and figure this yeah, stuff there's, out. There's my wicked own. videos out there on YouTube now, like Park Tools or GCN. Yeah, the no, home mechanic all, stuff. All of those. So good. Yeah, yours are more entertaining though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. So I guess that's my my story so far. Yeah, nice. Allie, say hi. Oh, hello. Hey, Allie. How you going? Yeah. So, so you yeah, got a, man. What, what, you've got a Trek Amanda, haven't you, Allie? Allie's got a Amanda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's got, uh, she had an, when I met her, she had an ALR. That's right. Like Tiagra ALR. Yeah. But she was riding... 150 miles a week and i was like why don't you have a carbon bike like and i i didn't even have a bike yet and i was like why don't you have a carbon bike yet and she's like well i bought this bike and it's a good bike you know it's a it's great a good bike. It's a rim, a rim bike ALR. Yeah. yeah so so eventually like i think i bought a bike and then i'm like all right i'm getting you a carbon frame next and this kid named rex who's like a local pro he's a pretty cool kid um rex shout out he he got a new bike and was just selling he had just got he just sent it into trek um yeah. it's a sl h2 i think but he just sent it into trek to get the bottom bracket bracket redone oh, yeah, yeah. you know they like yeah. they like sanded it out and put a new one in and sent it back but um then so we took everything off her alr and put it on that bike because she had gotten ultegra and some stuff like you know it, nice. she, she had upgraded so we put yeah, so we built her, her, her trek, and then we took it. I built it. I built it. I put it all together for her. But then we took yeah. it into trek uh, to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm gonna tell the story. You want to tell a story? Uh, I, I, you, you can tell it. I, I don't. I can't hear. So. Okay. Tell. So so I build it, and we take it in just to have, and it was running pretty fucking good. And yeah. so we're like, let's take it in just to have the pros go over it, right? we we go to pick it up the guy wheels it out looking really nervous and he's yeah. all he's all hey he's like hey how much did you get this bike for and we're like why because when we bought this bike we've been watching your videos for years you know like yeah, obviously yeah. we <laughs> drop the, the drop the you know drop the fork out and look at all the things and we look carbon frame it's like yeah I looked up and down that thing every inch i know where to look so yeah, yeah immediately we looked just at like... every millimeter of this thing twisted everything looked at it, it was perfect right <clears throat> yeah so so this guy rolls it out and he's all how much did you get this bike for and we're all why and he's all who'd you get this from and we're all why and, and he's like <laughs> oh well there's a bump on it that that i had to fill and and I'm like, like i'm a i'm a career mechanic right you know and i'm like what are you talking about a yeah. bump Cause that this mechanic to Mac mechanic, that makes no sense. A bump. Right. He's all, yeah, there was a bump in the carbon. So I had to drill it out and fix it. And we said, what? <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, dude, what do you, what exactly? And then we're like, okay, okay. All right, cool. Well, let us take the bike. We'll, okay. We gave him the benefit of the doubt. You know, we're like, okay, whatever. So he, yeah. sh he shows us underneath that there's a hole and someone had put JB weld in it. Okay. And so we take it and we're like, what the fuck? So it turns out someone, some noob was working on our bike, well, on her bike. They had us, uh, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the inter internal, internal cable, cable routing goes, goes and so you can, yeah, yeah. if you sweat on it, it gets kind of corroded. The screw yep. corro wouldn't come out. But like, you don't have to take it out. You can still route it pretty easily. But this That's kid right. decided to drill the screws out, went all okay. the way through the bike. So the holes in the bottom of the top tube right underneath where yeah, yeah, yeah. the cable routing. Where the she cable hasn't even ridden this bike yet. 
So yeah, there's they put a hole in my carbon frame from the bike shop. Yeah, and tried to blame it on me. Tried for to blame not it looking on... at the bike. And, oh yeah, well you, you no, bro. It. We walked. We looked to... at every inch of this bike. And yeah, Rex yeah. would have told us if there was a hole in it because he's a cool dude. He's a well-known yeah, yeah. local writer who still puts yeah. himself out on social media. So if he's selling bikes to, to locals right. trying to pull it's a not going to rip them no off. Way. It doesn't he's make gonna sense. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we were just like, holy crap. And then the yeah. bike was still not running that great. And we're, I was just like, we're never, okay. never. Okay. Luckily, it was it, it couldn't have been a hole couldn't have been drilled in a better place on it, though. You know, it's in like not a very high stress and she's not. Yeah, she's you know right. she's 90 Lightweight. pounds or something <laughs> no but, but it's it was a used frame luckily so if it that's why he was asking me though obviously where did you get it from how much did you pay i'm like these are weird yeah. questions. we're like what are you talking about he was he looking real nervous <laughs> and like I, I i've been a mechanic my whole life and like shady mechanics are like I, I can't like I can't stand that shit so I saw the look on his face and I was like something's wrong this is not good but uh but yeah, yeah. but then that gave me good luck because I found that S works for like five a mod is a super easy to work on yeah it's it's such a simple yeah, nice. like the mod is, is like, super easy to work on yeah it's it's like it's it's two, a two my house here. It's a very mid range, like it's nothing too flashy, but it does the trick. Like it's, it's got, like, I reckon it, I reckon the Mondas is as good as it gets, really. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're a nice spot, man. If you it feels a lot more stiff than, than, than the specialized that I've had, but not yeah. my TCR. TCR is crazy stiff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Mondas, uh, yeah, I rate them, man. Like they're, uh, they're so cheap now as well because they've been break. Not in LA still, man. I still watch. Like I, I watch and I, you, try I, mean, you, and I find how the much do they sell for. Like, you know? Yeah, everyone yeah, still the wants out the money for stuff here. List, listed prices, yeah, listed price is not market value. Yeah, I remember I got that. I yeah. got that SL one S works for five hundred bucks, and then I got That's those right. two TCRs for five hundred yeah, yeah, bucks. Good, yeah. That was crazy. That's um, right. But yeah, they're around, like you say. There's you heaps of deals in California. Yeah, they're you around. Gotta watch, but everybody yeah. else is, and, they, and they're just getting cheaper. Yeah. yeah, they're just it's... getting cheaper. Like, there's no rush. Like these bikes, there's there's thousands of them out there, just sitting in garages, and they pop Me up. Me and Ali keep like we're like, where are all these bikes? I don't like. I don't think anyone's selling their rim brake bikes in LA. Like they there's are they so are. little bikes for sale in LA, and it's like there has to be tens of thousands of rim brake, decent rim brake bikes from the '90s and. Early yeah, there is. There, there, there is, man. Like California is like a cycling mecca, and a lot of these bikes they'll end up on marketplace or people Facey die and, and in, Instagram in state. and Cra yeah. and Craigslist and offer up. Like Gumtree, I look at that yeah, yeah. stuff every day, and it's I'm yeah, surprised eBay. there's not more. That's that's yeah. or not not more or the the prices do seem to be coming down <laughs> now. Like like super sixes are getting to be like 1500 bucks or 1200 bucks and like where they were like 3000 last year yeah, because there it, were no bikes around getting, last year this is getting cheaper man this is yeah. no rush no rush i have to distract myself from buying stuff i'm like this is getting cheaper you know it's just getting cheaper there's no no rush <laughs> like the rim brake stuff it's for me it's hard to sell rim brake bikes now in yeah. australia like we're in the downswing of it but like in, a, in the future is when we're going to upswing again and you're going to be sitting on like a lot wonder, of money with all those I bikes. I wonder, you know. They're just going to keep building um, garbage unless they start building rim brake bikes again. Yeah, but that's just the that's just the people, man. Like, you know. Yeah. Like the price in petrol in Australia is crazy high. I don't see more cyclists on the road commuting to work. Yeah. You know? Like I was at, we, we, well, went to, yeah. we went to one of vegan cyclists like free rides up in uh yosemite it was it's probably the coolest ride i've ever been on nice. and just since it wasn't a race and it was free the vibe was totally different yeah, yeah just a bunch of bunch of cool cyclists hanging out actually talking to each other not like is there's like yeah. no race so it's not like everyone's yeah, just, the, you know friendly yeah just getting a contest or anything so it was a lot yeah, of yeah, fun yeah. but um i broke my bike like the day before and so i borrowed that's what he said. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, learned, learned Tyler's cool. arrowed. And man, it was. I would much rather would have had my bike. I mean, the group set was amazing. The SRAM the Red, the, yeah, yeah. the electronic SRAM Red Axis, like twelve speed was. Yeah. I really like the shifting. How that works. Um, yeah. We, you know, it's it's 
electronic shiftings like oh whatever but then you ride a bike with it and you're all oh shit it's really nice <laughs> you know yeah but you didn't frame... do r2 before what no i'd never you... touched electronic yeah dr2 is better I've dr2 for used... me you should have dr2 is faster i've only Just used faster. old rim brake stuff before that one so it was a big yeah. change and the group set was very nice um but the frame was garbage um it was, it was shit geometry. Shit geometry. It was fast. It was slippery and fast, but the geometry was awful. Out of the saddle made me want to just get off the bike. Like it was, it was really, and it was like we descend, we did probably the gnarliest descent I've ever done. And it was really hard keeping behind her with that bike just because it was really yeah. sluggish to turn like yeah. it wasn't as darty as the old bikes and that's right you know it had great great brakes and a 30 millimeter tire so that was really yeah. nice but it was still just yeah. like oh i really gotta really gotta muscle this bike you know to keep up with her and yeah. tyler you know like their yeah. tyler's out there going crazy yeah. uh, what self-harm descending self yeah self-harm descending, descending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was that Pretty was much, a really fun trip He's yeah. gonna burn out. Yeah, unfortunately, because he, he's Tyler's such a go getter, you know, like he's, he's it, such a go getter. It was um, funny spending a couple of days with him because, uh, yeah. you know, you just it's it further reinforces that people have different, different. You know, they build a platform on YouTube and they present themselves. Not that there's anything. He was a great dude, but it's just every dude I meet on YouTube is very different in the in the real life than they are yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> Pretty much everyone, me included. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's uh, no, it's yeah, he's just got to stay carved up and uh, get their sleep and have a few days off stims here and there. Yeah, that's for sure. Makes a big difference. Yeah, man. Well, cool. I'm glad we've what's finally the got what's the temperature you over there now? It's it just started raining, but it's like it's 60s still in the rain, oh, yeah. you know. Where, where are you guys? Where, where we're at, so you know, I see you the valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Allie just went and did Fernwood, but but she's like, this is the last couple of days of riding before it's going to be raining a lot. But it's still even like last year, we only we only didn't ride for a week, maybe a week or two. Yeah, I mean, we get pretty spoiled here because it's really nice. I mean, for my friends who are living, you know, places where it snows, they're like, you can't complain. <laughs> you can't do but, anything. Yeah, I have to like put on an extra layer. I'm like, oh, this sucks, but it's it's getting pretty cold, but still, it's still rideable. When you're riding hard, yeah. it shouldn't matter. <laughs> it's like um, I'm just looking at the maps now where Fernwood is. Oh, Fernwood yeah. is up to Panga Canyon. That's right. Yeah, it's it's you know it's where all all the all the all uh, Froomies there and Pidcock has a house now there and Garrett Thomas really? has a house Natasha there. Have to come to yeah. LA and ride, or at least like so Southern California, California. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, when just... it's summer here, because you guys are opposite winter, summer, different yeah. hemisphere. That is correct. Your video from going up Baldy. Oh, yeah. Pretty fucking funny. Oh, classic. Yeah. <laughs> she went and did that. She went and did your route like no, a couple I weeks did, ago. Well, oh, did, you... uh, that was Mount Wilson. Oh, Mount not, Wilson. Not Baldy, yeah. Yeah. That shit was funny. And then the, you were like out on Mulholland and you were like crying. You're like, oh my God, there's no one out here. Oh, like it's, Mulholland. it's sweet. We're spoiled living in that area. Yeah. Like it is so nice. Yes. Yeah. And then like we nice. find new routes and we're like, we didn't even know Deer Creek. We found this Deer Creek and it's like amazing. And she's Beautiful. like never even been up there. <laughs> yeah. And like been she's got like twenty thousand miles in those hills. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's it's really awesome up there, like how much uh is going on. So you where are you guys you guys in near Calabasas or Woodland Hills? Yeah, pretty close. To oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's uh, Cookie Man lives right down the street. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, we, yeah, we, we have lots of run ins with Cookie Man. <laughs> he chased us down. We were driving our car once. Oh, he chased bro. us down. It was hilarious. We saw him. We were all, hey, Phil. And he like looked and like we drove for like 10 minutes, right? Like really far. Like up a hill. And then, and then down this huge hill. And we we're sitting at a stoplight. And all of a sudden, he's sitting right by us looking in the car. And we're like, it, yeah. he was like all like gloating because he, it was fast. Like he must have really yeah, like, hauled like, ass to pick up with us. Expect me to be yeah. Right and he was like far. sitting there. And we're all, oh, hey. And he's like, you know, he was just all, hey. And he like was just standing there it looking at me. <laughs> it was like we're the almost awkward thing ever. But we see him out riding like every other 
every week. I like calling him Cookie Man, though. Yeah. I think I, well, he, hey, he seems man. a little like. Ugh. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to say during what it says good day. Yeah, <laughs> no, he knows yeah. every time we call him Cookie. I'm pretty sure. He I mean, is anyone really anyone else really calling him that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, he knows. Not quite that. <laughs> We're always down to troll. Yeah, he, he's definitely the fastest rider I've ever seen in my life. That that dark Norton summer, I've never ever seen anything like that. And I've ridden with all the all the fucking all the riders, man. It was Chris like Freak, he was man. on an e-bike. He was it was insane. And he like smoked easy, that other dude like instantly. Yeah, how easy he, he dropped me. And I, I did like a sub 17 minute 5k the day before. So my fitness is pretty decent. Yeah. I was a bit cooked that morning from riding, but still. Um no, it makes how, no how sense. He, he's how the, he smoked me and and then he smoked the second guy, um, what's his name? Guy Kalma, who's like he's the he's the greatest writer of all time. He is, yeah, he's like <laughs> crazy he's how real, that works. Yeah. Now these uh not pro these uh you know yeah. these uh EPO. these professional teams just they're just they're missing out they could be dominating right now with him <laughs> but it it just goes to show you like you know once you get to a certain level of fitness like anyone can be you know if you you know anyone can be a really really fast climber if you're on the EPO you know once you're sort of like you've got a skinny physiology and you know, if you've been riding for quite a while, because Phil's been riding for quite a long time. He's he real skinny. Himself. Yeah, like real you know, skinny. And he, he pushes out what's like 90 kilo guys do, you know? Like it's, it's it doesn't make any sense if you look at the guy. Like if you if you didn't know cyclists, you'd be like it, it's pretty yeah, funny. That, that's red blood cells. And to be that skinny and have such a high red red blood cell count isn't isn't natural, isn't normal. So he definitely uh, he dips his a bag of blood. <laughs> he dips he dips his cookies in the magic sauce for Tom Z, I reckon. <laughs> EPI. But yeah, hey, was... you know, good on him, but he should get rid of that tattoo, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were, I can't well that that's because like... that would that would chew him up, man. Like okay, sure, we'll take drugs, no worries about that, but like get rid yeah, laser tattoo. the tattoo off your arm. <laughs> Doing this thing, he should just get rid of the C and just be lean, you know. It's like, just lean, <laughs> okay. yeah. lean, lean, lean but you ain't clean. Lean. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah that's so funny. Um, um no, it's all good. Yeah, so, yeah, so you got Topanga there. Well, wow, you've got a lot of a lot of riding around there, haven't you? Very oh, much. it's that's the I mean, you should look at Strava, like it's Calabasas it's, Peak. Even, and we can just go up north. Tuna, up Tuna Canyon's pretty cool. Isn't it? Yeah, Tuna yeah. Canyon. Yeah, it's a playground. That's what that's one way, isn't it? Is that still one way? Tuna, yeah, tuna's one way. So it's Las Flores, right? Oh, no, no, Las Flores is both ways. It's down. Really. There's Payuma. And what's the one? Latigo. Latigo is really cool. Yes. Latigo is super cool. So much. And then there's and you like, can ride all those, you ride all those, tra those trails as well. Oh, there's oh, gravel. Like, there's so much gravel. It's not even Yeah, you funny. can ride that on the road bike. On the yeah, no. We, oh, yeah. We only recently got gravel bikes, but we were you know all half the time we're out there we're on our road bikes on 28 I mean, on it's gravel fire like, road, so yeah. yeah it's it's fine i mean especially with uh with 28s like you just have to be careful yeah the center, mainly. <laughs> yeah but like, it's really it's fun, real fun passing yeah, mountain just, bikers going on like going mountain bikers there, just like, look at us like we're crazy like what are you doing out yeah. here this is a full-on mountain bike and they're like those you're on like 25 or most of them are e-bikes now e-mountain bikes that's like it's scary yeah. now it's like there's a bunch of dirt bikers out there yeah. but then we then we got like steel frame gravel bikes and rode the same areas and we're like oh gravel bikes are cool like they're a lot more fun you just don't have to worry as much about crashing and your yeah. bike braking and stuff like that just heavy <laughs> and just these bikes yeah. i mean you know even working on them yourself it gets expensive replacing stuff all the damn time except for the rim brake stuff which is getting cheaper and cheaper it is getting cheaper second, near, near new secondhand stuff yeah, oh. I'm starting well, to collect just like scratching. rear derailers and stuff. Oh, the cat scratching. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Our cat is scratching the thing. The this cat scratcher. Cat I got the computer on the cat scratcher. No, the cat's not quiet. He's being very quiet. He's being very respectful right now. He usually is the loudest cat in the world. Well, he gets he's pissed. louder than all your cats combined. He gets he pissed gets... when he makes videos because he's always like, ah! he's like gets excited and starts yelling. So he's going, cat will just start meow, meow. Like he screaming and pacing around. Yeah, he hates so it. <laughs> That's Steve's, funny. Steve's the, uh, Steve's, Steve's the keto cat. He's very vocal. Yeah. He's a tomcat. He's yeah. a tomcat. <laughs> His muscles. 
he's got a stomach problem. He he actually has to be keto. Yeah, we feed him raw. Unfortunately, uh, raw we meat. have to re- that, feed him. That's raw what meat. cats eat. They, they they keto animals really. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He he's get he like uh, he's got stomach problems. He throws up anything but that. So yeah, no, he cats designed for meat for sure. Yeah, he likes yeah, it a lot. Cold blooded killers. All he wants to do is kill stuff. Yeah, they don't care about us at all. If we died, he'd eat us. <laughs> he'd eat you. Yeah, he likes me. <laughs> let, let me quick. I'll, I'll quickly show you this Amanda I got. Wait a sec. Oh, you got a new Amanda. Yeah. Can you hear? Barely. Come here. Come here. So this is Ooh. like an old one hundred five, and it's it's near new condition. It's a bit dusty. Got to give it a clean on that. Is that H one? Uh, so H two. H two. So that that has bigger wheels. H two is. H2 is just a taller head tube. H1's a shorter head tube. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. So most of the only one that has H2 is the SLR. Mm. It's a really, really thin material, which is very expensive, but also very fragile if you crash it. So that's an Amanda S. S. Um, so, oh, yeah. S meaning it's not the SL has the, the seat cap that goes over oh there. that's the difference so, so okay. the s is like an alr but carbon version yeah this yeah, yeah. 27.2 what year is that that is be a 2016 i reckon oh okay it's got 105 like 27 speed probably yeah i'm not sure i got, I got it for 450 bucks australian damn how much 450 450 aussie from from the yeah. original owner this lady this lady she had she had broken a wrist with a walking accident she said i can't ride it anymore i'll get rid of it and so yeah, it's like mint condition, four hundred fifty dollars Australian. It was advertised for five fifty, and no one was buying it. That's crazy. Like, that yeah, would like those deals go real quick in LA. Um, yeah, uh, I mean that um, that bike would go for twelve hundred in LA easy any day of the week. Damn. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna try and get a thousand Aussie for it. I like, yeah. want to give it clean up and put up some better photos and try my luck with it. It's one hundred five. One hundred five. Eleven speed. Eleven speed. Fifty. So, like pre shadow. Uh, yes, yeah, it's the, it's yeah. 50, the 5800 group set. It's those like group pretty, sets are dope. Yeah, I like those man. those rear derailers almost more yeah. than the new ones, I think. They yeah, just, well. I, I bought my, my son a road bike and it has an, a 105, like nine speed on it. And I, he's rid, like, he's completely thrashed the bike, but the derailleur has never gone out of index like the whole yeah. time. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, and it shifts really nice still. Like it's yeah, crazy. It's like he throws like, it on the, the ground and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That all, old all the stuff. Shimano shit's good. You, all you have to do is worry about your derailleur hanger straightening. Yeah. That seems to always Straight be the problem that I difference. come into is, yeah. is the hanger hangers get bent and everything gets weird. I've got like, one of those of Abbey tools, straight hanger tools from Abbey tools. Is it a, like a laser? No, nah, it's not laser. It's like a. It's called the Abbey. E B B E Y tools. It's called the Hag H A G. Yeah, it's green. It wasn't cheap, but I've had two of them, and they're, they're great. It, it repairs them straight. Once you know how to use it, and it's oh perfect. wow, it repairs them. Yeah, it huh? straightens the hanger. Sick. So that then that way your derailleur sh- sits straight, and it can boom 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 shift really good. I yeah. bought it when I was at Sea Otter. Sea Otter? Up oh, you're the, out here? Yeah, last yeah. time you were out here. Sea Otter is a really cool event. I think we're going to go this next year. It was a cool yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah, the guy was just like, hey, I'll straighten your derailleur tool, your derailleur for you. I was like, okay. So I said, it's fine, but you know, no worries. He was a great salesman, and he and you're like, holy shit. And I was like, damn, fucking. All right, it actually, you, you didn't even know it was, be- yeah, that's cool. So you're all buy one of those. What'd you do? What'd you do? And he's like, I did this. And I said, how much is that tour is? I said, I sold, sold. And um, yeah, it was, it was quite funny. But yeah, that was a game changer for me. And then I then I went around straightening everyone's hanger up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny with on. tools like being a mechanic. Um, there's so many gimmicky cool tools that come along, but then something that's amazing comes along. My dad, we just hung out with my dad the other day, and he had a crescent. He has a crescent wrench. He's all, you know me. I don't buy tools, and especially faffy tools, but it, it's a crescent wrench that has a vice grip on it. Cause you know, crescent wrench always has a little bit of wiggle at the end. Yeah. This gets rid of that and it clamps it. And I was just like, damn, that's a fucking cool tool. Like, but yeah, yeah. like sometimes 
uh, weird tools can be awesome but that that one sounds pretty dope we we definitely yeah. need something like that we're always bending our rear derailleurs or yeah or I, I, hangers. Sent, I, sent, I sent you a link what it looks like cool thanks because they're like uh it's 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 like if you don't know how to bend like which way to bend them back because we're noobs it's, not, it's just yeah. like yeah it's too much but that's the the it's no great tool the only thing the only problem with the tool is you can't let it get wet because i let mine get wet one time and and the parts rusted together ah uh, yeah and there's, there's so fine tuned tolerance i just i couldn't I, I lost the tool i tried to open it and no it just broke just welded, well, welded shut it's crazy and i was how on it and i just no i just got destroyed so i had to buy another one so don't always keep them keep it greased never let it like stick together yeah Otherwise, like like a lot aluminum it keep it keep it indoors like aluminum S seat post in a steel. steel frame yeah that Something shit just like that. welds yeah, together yeah. yeah i have this raleigh frame that's really cool but it's basically toast because it's got <sighs> like <laughs> yeah and someone tried to like remove it and it just he just beat the shit up but oh, okay if you ever have a, a bike like that with the seat post frozen, what you can do is undo the seat clamp, like yeah. the, the yeah. Yeah, seat post clamp. So, and then sc spray some sort of lube down there and ride the bike and the impacts of you sitting on it can. Oh can yeah. Loosen it. That's interesting. That's what I did with a, I bought a Pinarello Prince off a lawyer last year and his, that seat post was pretty like fixed in there. So I just, yeah, I, I sprayed some lube down there, took the seat clamp off, Wrote it and then bang after about 20 k's, boom, I hit a bump and it really just loosened up. And I just could swivel it out and clean it and put it back in. That's dope. One of Ali's yeah. great disappointments in life is not getting a, a Pragma bike when you had them. Oh, did they come back? Again? No way. They're really? coming back. If you want one, I'll get the cost price for you. Like, oh, is it um, the same place? There is, I was getting it from two, three different places. We um, almost got frames from Light Carbon. They have a pretty cool frame for f like yeah, 500 bucks shipped. Yeah, the, 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 the Cookie Man frame. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. a good bike. I yeah. rate that. The only problem is the seat post is proprietary, meaning it's like. I would know, just order two of them with it, but I would way, yeah, way, yeah, way yeah. rather get but, a Pragma though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. The, I like the Pragma's better because it's a, a round seat post. So yeah, if you want to get a real course. forward position, like Natasha rides a real forward position, she gets her seat slammed as forward <clears> as possible <throat> and then flips the seat post around so it's like really forward. Yeah. Um, so she's fair over, fair over the bottom bracket. Um, and then runs a longer stem, so she's more like forwarder. And that for me, that feels better as well. I'm not sure if you tried that, slamming your seat forward. Yeah. Well, we both did, did actually recently. It is I, I I run mine really slammed forward. But I have yeah. balls. She does. She, oh. she, she recently has run run her more. But yeah, for climbing, it's way better. It's personal preference. You know, if it's you're climbing preference. a lot, it's like way yeah. more comfortable. Um, it is. But yeah. It so is. you're you're getting more of the Pragma frames. They're the same ones. Yep. Oh. Yeah. I'm just I'm just waiting until the shipping's like back to normal. Yeah. Because there's not nothing worse than having people waiting. I hate waiting for stuff. You Do know, you still have the stuff. gravel bikes? Yeah, I do. Oh, that actually, she would need one of those. Yeah, we we've can, been doing lots do of gravel that. races, and we have steel. We have niner steel. If you want anything, let me know. And I'll, I'll get you to pay. You can, yeah, you can pay the factory direct, and that's what that way you save any PayPal fees and stuff like that. Dope. That'd be rad. But yeah, um, she's she's been. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll, we've sent some emails out. Yeah, because she needs a, a little bit lighter of a gravel bike to race with, because the steel bike's like forty pounds or something. And well, how about nice. how about like just a really lightweight cross country not twenty nine er? You know, for like a thousand bucks or somewhere for, oh, for oh, gravel like a racing. Bike. Yeah, a little lightweight twenty nine, like a hardtail. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for gravel yeah. racing, that would be a better that bike. Like but a, <laughs> Dylan Johnson, she just loves drop bars. <laughs> well, no, Dylan Johnson. Do you see? He ran. I forgot what. He did, one did of the last big race. gra gravel races. He ran drop bars on his twenty nine er. Um, and he did poorly, but he said that was me. That was his own. But he said the the setup would have been good. But it's it's that was always my dream. She's I always have wanted old, to build something like that. Yeah, I wanted to put drop bars on a mountain bike for forever. Be a good experience. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but like I like gravel bikes. But to be honest, like if I was going to do a race, I'll, I'll, I would use a, a twenty nine a hard tail. Yeah, because yeah. you can just nail it like... down. It's so much. It's more confident with that wide bar. 
Yeah. And the next yeah. race we're probably yeah. doing and, is and because you can draft. Yeah, yeah, and because you can draft, then the aero part of the drop bars isn't as important, you know? Yeah. Because you can just sit in behind a rider like a meter or two back and then you're good to go. So for it me, it doesn't matter that you're the wide. gravel bikes are like, you know, are, yeah. are like, <laughs> it's not tell. the best. Yeah. All these people you are just... winning, uh, they're, you, they're <laughs> road bikes, disc brake road bikes are pretty much gravel bikes, right? So everyone's That's winning right. these gravel races on bikes. their road bikes, really. Exactly. Just, yeah. exactly. Yeah, as fat of tires as they can fit on there. And that's the lightest option. Really, I mean, that would be that would be the yeah. ideal yeah. gravel that's race. That's what Sagan ran 32s on a Roubaix. That's right. Oh, so it's yeah. like, yeah. Those guys have freaky skill though, they're like. Yeah. <laughs> for All me, the the, do. yeah, that's exactly right. Um, but for me, the, the hard tail with two inch wheels or 2.2 tires, it just gives you that mad pillow tire. So you, you don't lose just much energy. You just roll over everything. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, you're not like yeah. really like trying to pick your line. You just trolling through it. I've actually never had a 29er. So I had, I grew up mountain oh, really? biking. Um, but my last mountain bike had 26 inch wheels. It's a full suspension, oh, 26. Yeah. And it's, I rode. I rode my ex, -boy my ex boyfriend. I got him riding, and he got a twenty nine er. And I hopped on his bike. I'm all, what the hell? This thing is so it just <sighs> rolls over everything so much easier than my bike. And so I thought yeah. I'd be like smoking him, and he was like totally doing really well. I'm like, oh wow, that's not it's not as big of a difference as I thought. But yeah, like I I definitely still want to get a twenty nine er because it's just so much more capable. How tall are you in centimeter in your feet? Um, I'm five five feet six inches, so I'm not sure centimeters how much that is. Oh, that's like one sixty five, I reckon. Five, same six. She's not short for a girl. Like same as freely, yeah. yeah. Medium, medium, same as freely. Yeah. You think? Yeah, yeah. one sixty six. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Natasha's a little taller. Than Natasha's, you, taller Natasha's yeah. one. Natasha's five ten. Five yeah. ten. Yeah. One seven eight. Yeah. Dude, Liver King. That. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a good week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit was hilarious because especially on my page i've been trolling people because uh, over that guy being on steroids forever and just people did not it's just you've seen the people in my chat they think anyone they think all these people are natty like they're like uh, you get that big without steroids give me a break dude that guy's in a chance he got exposed by all these other people for having implants too. Some I, guy I don't know if he's got him with a camera implants. and was like, yeah. "Dude, you got implants, bro." And he's like, oh, "I don't have implants, huh?" Someone ran up to him with a camera. Yeah. Oh. Some some uh, I don't know if he's got I, I don't know if he's got implants. I mean, I, w I won't say no, but I'll also be like, "Yeah, maybe not." Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like, doctors are doing amazing things these days. Who knows? I mean, it, I, yeah, but he could wouldn't put my life on it. He doesn't, but I'll also be like, okay, I can see he's just, he's just training hard. He's blasting growth hormone. And so the muscles just can grow, you know, yeah. like a weirdly differently levels. So what happened with uh, Dr. Baker? He had a heart Baker, attack. Um, he, Sean Baker. Or, yeah. I, I sort of like, I don't, I don't have hundred percent proof on that. I put it uh, out there. Yeah, yeah. Heard, but he disappeared and came back small. We, right? he, exactly. So yeah. it's like, hey, why all of a sudden did you stop doing so much steroids? You know, did he get the clot shot? I don't know. But he dropped. Shot? I think this was beforehand. Oh, was, was it before? Ah. If you type in Sean Baker before and after. Yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, that was a rumor I heard. I don't have any conclusive evidence of that one, but he would keep it pretty tight if he did. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, absolutely. But I was just like, why have you, why have you stopped taking steroids? You know what I mean? Like, that's weird. <laughs> like, like drastically taken. You stop stop eating taking meat you know? is what you're going to tell everyone. Like, people are going <laughs> to wonder where all your your thick arms went. It's pretty oh, funny. Where is he? I could have found him. And then uh, what? Uh, carnivore and got a photo eating somewhere. fruit and stuff now. Finally. And uh, yeah, yeah, best meme of the week though was uh, it was a picture, it was like what you think what carnivores think they're gonna look like or what, what they're, they're gonna be like. <laughs> yeah. And it was a picture of Liver King and then what they're actually like. And it was a picture of Jordan Peterson just crying on like <laughs> Joe Rogan's podcast, just like, yeah, totally dude's cr up. dude cries all the time at the drop of a hat. It's insane. I, I would too, man. Like, like, no, you know, like, uh, have you watched Michaela uh, any of Michaela's podcasts? Too. 
Michaela Peterson. Um, I have. I've got them on my. I've got them on, on my to do list. My to do list. Is like, they're not even. She just sits them. there. She sits there in full makeup, making like, pup. You know, like pursing her lips, make like making sexy face, and just just agrees with everything that they say and looks at a chat. Just like homie that you, the, the Joey, yeah. Joey was looking yeah. at a chat. She looks at a chat and that's the only way she's able to podcast is repeating things. Her chat minions tell her and it's, it's, it's yeah. so yeah. painfully bad. And you know, it's like, why, you, why you gotta have yeah. so much makeup girl? Like if you're so healthy from your meat diet, why do you have like concrete on your face? You know, like exactly. it's crazy. Exactly. It's super These people funny. are just lost. But the thing is that they're, I mean, we all we we all love significance. We all love a bit of fame, and you know, like patting the back. But these people are just jumping on this carnivore thing. But it's just such destructive information, you know. Yeah, like it just destroys people's mental health. That lack of carbohydrate. So that people is- are like, they think they're doing well, meaning well, but it's, just, it's like basically telling people to go down Tuna Canyon with no hands in the bars. Yeah, you know, like it might be looking Suck cool Brian. and stuff, but it's just disastrous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's Saffron Brian, you know, like the dude's gonna have a, a crazy crash at some point, you know, like it's yeah, it's uh you know it's it's, just, def- it's I mean, coolish. I understand why they do it, but it's dangerous. Yeah, lying to people about health. I mean, like it, it's it's really like we're really living in backwards times right now. Um with with especially with these keto, I mean these carnivore people, like they're kind of like a huge like beacon red flag that like things are wrong right now and uh that you know the That's brainwashing right. that happens that joe wrote the cult of joe rogan and the group think around it like it's it's very seriously like joe rogan's mainstream news and like anyone he has on there like i i know like vegans that worship the guy and i'm like how is it like <laughs> how is it possible that like yeah. you know all these vegans like worship this dude and he does nothing but because he's got he's got though. mad clout yeah, of course. Would you go on Matt, to Joe Rogan's podcast for UFC. Writer? What's that? Would you do Joe Rogan? The podcast? Oh, fucking in a heart, but in a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? How, like, how would you approach it? How would you approach it? Do you think? Just, we'll just, just jump on and start talking. You're like, I'll do it anytime, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go on make anyone's that podcast. I'll go on anyone's podcast. Like, yeah, that's yeah. how I do things. <laughs> Well, cool, man. Yeah, it's just the uh, getting the times right and time zones. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool, man. Thanks for making the time. I know you're a busy dude. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all good. We should try and do it. It's, again it's, it's not so much that I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's like I'm always doing something, and it's just like I'm like sort of ADD with the. You know, I'm the same I'm, way, I'm dude. Book, you don't right? have to explain it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Zill- zillion projects. <laughs> yep. You know, and a hot girlfriend running around so, uh, half naked. Hey. There you go. <laughs> well, cool, man. We'll talk again sometime. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, man. Anytime. Awesome. All right. Take care, gang. Peace.